Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Tuesday Tips Live. It's me, Phil, here in the Digital DJ Tip Studio with another end of week chill out, settle down, a drink after work. It's that kind of vibe. I'm here to help you, here to chat DJing for as long as it takes uh, and to just basically unwind. So if you are watching this over in the States, I know it's not quite the end of your day yet, but hey, we can end every day when we want at the moment, can't we? Let's be honest. So if you're joining us at lunchtime in East Coast, or if you're joining us even in the morning over there, West Coast, good to have you here. Hello to everyone in Europe where it really is the end of Friday. And uh, hello to everyone watching us further east than that over towards Asia and even those late birds out in uh, Australasia as well. Good to have you all here. I'm Phil from Digital DJ Tips. If you are new to Digital DJ Tips, we are the people behind Rock the Dance Floor, the Amazon number one bestseller on how to DJ, but we're also the people behind the digitaldjtips.com website and YouTube channel and Facebook page and all that. You might have seen us doing our live streams on Sundays, every Sunday at 5 p.m. London, midday Eastern. Uh, you might even have seen us uh, on these Friday broadcasts. We do them every week now, but Tuesday tips we do every week at the same time as this one on a Tuesday. That's strange, isn't it? Uh, and that's been going for years and years and years. So you might have seen us there, but wherever you have, we're here to help you become better DJs and DJ producers. And this week here in this slot, it's free. It's just whatever you ask. I've got no idea what you're going to ask. I've got no idea what we're going to be talking about for uh, the next little while. Uh, and that's half of the fun. So welcome if you have just joined us. Now, if you're watching the replay, it's probably because you didn't get a notification about us going live. And it's easy to fix that. Just click the subscribe to channel and click the bell. Or if you're on Facebook, make sure you, uh, you like the page and then click show posts first in your settings for the page. Uh, and anywhere else, you know what to do. All right then, so that's the housekeeping done. Let's head over to your comments straight away. So welcome people. This is the comment cam. For those of you who are new to all of this, this is where I uh, chat to you and I'm going to, uh, well I was gonna try and go live over on uh, Mixcloud, but it doesn't seem to work. Mixcloud is of course in beta at the moment. So at the moment we're on Facebook uh, and we are on our Twitch channel. We're also on our YouTube channel and also on Global DJ Network, our Facebook group. So welcome, good to have everyone here on those channels. We'll have to uh, have to make sure we get Mixcloud working before our Sunday session, which is the music session, which is they've been going brilliantly over on Mixcloud. It's so, so cool what those guys and girls have done. Uh, and actually, I interviewed the Mixcloud people uh, on Tuesday. So you can catch that. The replay that is on our YouTube channel and also on our Facebook page. So if you want to see uh, what the Mixcloud founders had to say about Mixcloud Live, and of course, if you've had your head in the sand. You might not know that Mixcloud have got a totally legal live streaming platform now, uh, which is really, really cool because it means that you don't have copyright takedowns whenever you go live uh, and start playing tracks uh, that are copyright protected, which let's face it, it's kind of what we do, isn't it, as DJs? So, uh, so yeah, that's really cool. So uh, anyway, you can go and watch the replay of that one. Now I'm here to answer your questions right here, right now. So uh, firstly, just to say a few very early hellos. Hi to Juan and DJ Romario and Keaton and Reke uh, and uh, Louis all on uh, our YouTube channel. Hi to uh, Sham, uh, Shamel who says, what's the name of that controller? What's the size and cost? Uh, that controller is actually a DJ system. You don't need to use your laptop with it at all. Uh, so it's the, uh, the Prime 2 from Den and DJ, and I'm not sure the cost, $1,200 off the top of my head, but I'm, I'm not sure, maybe someone will help me out with that one. Uh, so yeah, awesome little little device. Uh, all right then, uh, so yeah, hello over on Facebook to you, Samuel, also hello to uh, Nikki uh, and Tom and John and Shelby and Rasmus, uh, and joining us, DJ Ni Nigel's on Twitch, hello to you, DJ Nigel, uh, and also to Amar Tar on Twitch as well, slowly building our audience over there, good to have you Twitches. Is that, you know what you call Twitch people? Twitches? Uh, anyway, Twitches means something else in the UK. But <laughs> I think we'll stop that train of chat there. Uh, all right then, people, question time. Uh, the next question is from Samuel. So uh, Samuel says, uh, when will be the Prime 2 versus XDJ RX2? So you mean some kind of roundup or some kind of comparison from us? Well, we have got a review of them both. So you can go and watch both of our reviews. But it's a good idea. We'll see if we can get a comparison of those done for you. Thank you very much for that. Uh, thank you very much for all the people just wishing us well. We're all absolutely fine here. Everyone at Digital DJ Tips is okay, people. Uh, we've had uh, a scare in my family. My my mother, my, my stepmom was taken into hospital with suspected COVID. She was put on the COVID ward. She was very ill. 
uh, and she had got a infection that was not COVID, but, but gave her pneumonia and showed all the symptoms. So, you know, it would have been just our luck that she caught the virus in hospital, wouldn't it? But she's home now, she's getting better, and luckily she didn't catch it. So that's the closest we've come to it, and hopefully long may it stay that way. But our, heart, our, our hearts are, are with you wherever you are in the world, and however this is affecting you, that goes without saying, right, at these times. Anyway, thank you very much, everyone asking after us. It does does touch our hearts to see comments like that. Hopefully we can give you a dose of normal right here, right now. That's what this is all about, giving you a dose of normal. Uh, all right then. Um, so John says, hey, question. When you are live on Mixcloud, can you share it on your Facebook page? That is a very good question. So when you're live on Mixcloud, you can't actually share it as much. You know, you can't actually like put a link in on the Mixcloud page uh, with a stream showing and an embed showing, that's not possible. But what you can do is get a link from Mixcloud and you can post it on your Facebook page and on your Instagram and so on. And that way people know to come across to Mixcloud to watch you. It's free to watch on Mixcloud. You don't need to sign in or anything. So uh, that's the way to do it. Uh, and if you're really clever, maybe you'll take a little screenshot with a little play button on it and uh, post that picture and then your your link and then people think, oh look, it's a, it's a live stream and then realize they've got to click the link. That's what I'd do anyway. Uh, all right then, so um, lots and lots of you all over the world joining us. We've got one of you late people. Staying up late, Ash in Adelaide. Good to have you here, Ash. Um, and uh, if you have just joined us, by the way, and lots of people joining us, of course, all the time. Uh, it's me, Phil, here at Digital DJ Tips, just giving you some of my time to chat DJing, answer any of your questions. It's different for those of you who are used to our Tuesday Tips live broadcast at this time on a Tuesday. That's normally got a theme. So last week I was interviewing the Mix Cloud co-founders. Next week, hopefully, we've got a big product launch to show you on that slot. Uh, so that's normally, there was always there's a theme for that. But um, this is different. This is just chat. This is just you ask questions, I'll do my best to answer them for you. So that's what it's all about here today. Um, so Thomas on... Uh, YouTube says, hi, what are you expecting in a new Pioneer Nexus system and when are you expecting it? So Pioneer Nexus, uh, that is the classic DJ gear and I've got one of the Nexus units here, this one. Yeah, the Nexus players, these are the classic 2000s uh, that are out there at the moment. Actually, this is the, uh, yeah, the CDJ 2000 Nexus 2. So what are we expecting with the new one of these is the question. Uh, so... All right then, the new ones of these are coming. Of course they're coming. So let's have a talk about this. Let's head over here uh, and have a chat about these. So what I think is really interesting with Pioneer at the moment is that they're putting a lot of time and money into effort and cloud, right? Sorry, time and effort into, into software and cloud. So what you're getting is Pioneer's record box is starting to work with all the streaming platforms. Pioneer's announced a cloud locker so you can prepare your sets and listen to your tracks on your phone and it all comes across to your main DJ software when you next DJ with Recordbox DJ. Now, it's not a big leap of imagination to think that the next generation of these are gonna be fully Wi-Fi and, and network enabled and they will connect to all that Pioneer goodness. So what I think is gonna happen is you'll be able to walk up to a Pioneer system running the, you know, the CDJ 2000 Nexus 3 or whatever they call them and you'll be able to put in one single Pioneer username and password. And when you do that, all your own library, your personal library, and any subscriptions you've got to SoundCloud, Beatport, Link, uh, and things like that will all just appear. All your music will just appear, whether it's streaming or in your cloud locker or whatever. And so then we'll be at a stage where pro DJs will start to realize that they don't have to carry their music around on a drive apart from as a backup. They can just put a password in and it's all there. I think that's the biggest thing we're gonna see coming. Obviously, they're gonna have better screens, they're gonna have better processors, you're able to plug your music in without processing it beforehand and it'll all work. All the stuff that, that, that this kind of unit can do, the Denon units, but uh, I believe that's what they're gonna do. They're gonna try and leapfrog Denon, right? And the one thing they've got that Denon hasn't got now is this cloud locker idea. So that's what I think is gonna happen. Of course, you know, where Pioneer makes its gear, just like most manufacturers, is utterly affected by COVID-19 at the moment. So when we see that, I don't know. But that's what I think is going to happen. Okay, so uh, I hope that was a little bit of getting you excited, insight there for you, Thomas, on, uh, on certainly what we think is going to happen there. Uh, and keep your questions coming in. This is Phil at Digital DJ Tips with an, uh, an open house. Any questions? So please just keep them coming in. Uh, so Tom uh, says on Facebook, 
Hey Phil, what with all the copyright mutes and takedowns, I'd like to know if it's possible to change key in Rekordbox to get around this. I've seen a few videos, a few videos suggest it's possible. You know, there's a, a truth here. Changing the key of tracks, so they're a bit higher or a bit lower, changing the tempo of tracks, only playing a bit of a track, uh, putting effects over tracks, talking a lot on the microphone, uh, mixing quickly. These are all things that you'll see people saying, you know, you, you know, you Google or you search on YouTube, you know, get round copyright takedowns on live stream. And you'll see all this is this is all the stuff we've kind of like said, well, maybe this will work before. It doesn't work, folks. You're going to get taken down sooner or later. The only real thing that's going to stop your streams being taken down is playing music that is so under the radar or so old and that no one cares about it anymore that the big labels are not fingerprinting your mixes and are not uh, muting you. So I'm talking un unsigned artists from SoundCloud, you know, obscure genres from years gone by where they were never even digitized. You ripped the vinyl yourself, that kind of thing. Apart from that, you're running a gauntlet and you're, you're in the end, it's not a question of if you're going to get blocked, but when. So the best way around it is to use Mixcloud Live because Mixcloud Live is legal and they will not take your streams down, simple as that. So really, this is where we need to be putting our effort, folks, on Mixcloud Live. It's only in beta at the moment. I couldn't get it to work then, for instance, probably pilot error on my part. So we're not live on Mixcloud Live at the moment, as I would like to have been. But hey, it's there for us, made for DJs by DJs. That's the platform to use. Um, so um, simple, really. Uh, all right then, so Ross says, hey Phil, uh, Ross over on YouTube, I'm following your complete DJ course. I'm getting really frustrated with my DJing. I'm finding it difficult with pulling tracks together and I'm losing motivation. Right, I'll give you three tips here. Tip number one, uh, take it slowly. Go back over stuff that you think that you knew and you raced past and actually watch it again for a second time. Watch lessons again and do what you're asked to do because you know, the, the, one of the one of the the nature of online video course when you are buying a course, which is, you know, you, you it's up to you how quickly you take it. We call it self serve. Is you binge watch like on Netflix, but that doesn't work. It isn't Netflix. It's not a race to watch the end of the series. You can't do it all in an evening. Online training requires that you do what you're asked to do before moving on to the next thing. And if you're not happy with it, you ask questions. Any good online course will have tutor interaction. All our courses do. Underneath every lesson, you can ask questions. So do it. Ask questions. Make sure you're happy with what's being taught before you move on. And if you're not, ask questions. We'll work out why and we'll move you back to a lesson which might have something that you're missing. It can be really... Fun. So that's the first thing. The second thing is... Um, don't be so hard on yourself. DJing is not meant to be something you can just do like that. So uh, it's a lot better to just have little wins and celebrate them. Uh, but the third big thing is record your sets. Record what you do and listen back to it. That way you'll see what's right and what's wrong and you won't get frustrated. Instead, you'll be motivated to finish, to finish your practice session with something you can say, I did it. I've, done, I've got a recording. And listening to that will motivate you for the next one and show you where you're going wrong. I mean, Ross, come and talk to me in the course. That's what we're there for, right? So please do come and talk to me in the course and we'll help. Another reason people lose motivation, and you know, on whichever platform you're on, please give me a heart or a, or a, a thumb if you, 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 you know, this is you. It's because we haven't got any blinking gigs to play, right? Playing gigs is what it's all about. So no gigs equals no motivation sometimes. So try live streaming. Try, we, we've just published so much content on live streaming. We must have published seven or eight in-depth uh, articles and several videos just on live streaming in the last month. So have a look at those. See if you can, uh, you know, commit to just going live for, even if it's only a half hour mix, and you'll find that brings back some of the excitement and the focus that you get when you're playing gigs. Thank you very much for reaching out there, Ross. Do come and chat more inside your course. Uh, all right then. Um, Here's one for people to answer on Facebook. So if you're on Facebook at the moment, go and answer Daniel, who says, I'm wondering if anyone is having issues with the Pioneer XDJ XZ or XZ and Serato. I'm noticing the waveforms won't load on the XDJ XZ screen or will randomly disappear. So uh, go help if you are one of the users uh, of that system with Serato. Go help out our um, friend Daniel over there. All right then, this is any questions with me, Phil, at Digital DJ Tips. I'm here to answer your questions, to help you with your DJing, and just to chat crap at the end of the week. It's 17.26 here in Central European time. It's 20 past four in the UK, and it's kind of, you're already halfway through Friday, even over there in the States. And of course, everywhere else in the world, you finished Friday. 
most other places anyway. So this is kicking back. This is our pint together in a pub, albeit that I'm drinking filtered water, but hey. Chatting DJing at the end of the week. By the way, join me at uh, 5 p.m. London and midday Eastern for Balcony Beats, another live DJ set from my balcony, five minutes walk that way here in Gibraltar where Digital DJ Tips is based on Sunday. Uh, I'll be going live with a really, really chilled out sunshine house set. Uh, we'll be starting at about 1.10 BPM, just slowly winding it up. Uh, probably end with, with some classic disco or something like that. Real daytime vibes. Come and join me uh, then. I'd love to have you there and we'll be on Mixcloud live for sure because we won't get taken down there. Uh, all right then. So um, do you know if Mixcloud Pro's subscription overrules the Premier subscription, says Pete? I don't, Pete. I would guess it does because you don't hear about Premier anymore, do you? Um, so, uh, so yeah, um, I would imagine it does, but go and ask on their, their help, I would say. Uh, Paul, just big claps for you, Paul, coming from the labour ward of the local hospital. Uh, it's awesome, the job all our health workers, key workers and frontline people are doing at the moment. Of course it is. So good on you, Paul. And thank you for tuning in. I hope we're giving you some respite. Um, so um, so Reese says, lots of live streaming questions. Absolutely no surprise about that. Reese says, I'm not sure if you have OBS to hand. If you don't know what Reese is talking about, OBS is um, open broadcast software. It's one of the three ways that you can broadcast live on the internet. You download it to your laptop and you uh, you use it to plug in a camera or use your webcam a microphone or your DJ controller and the whole lot gets pushed off to Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, wherever. Uh, and it's free. It's great software to play around with. We just published a guide actually this week uh, on all your options for software. So go to digitaldjtips.com and look for uh, our guide on what software to use. And we cover Android phones, iOS devices, uh, Windows, and Mac. So whatever you've got, whatever you want to live stream from, we talk you through all your options there. Anyway, Reese is having problems with OBS. Uh, and Reese says, I'd love to know how to stream all cameras. Would you plug them into USB ports? Uh, right, okay. So uh, I believe that the version of OBS called Streamlabs will, uh, will automatically switch between the cameras for you. So you don't have to do it when you're broadcasting. I'm not sure about that, but I think there is a plug-in or a way of doing that on there. I'm pretty sure there is on the normal OBS as well. Uh, again, in the comments, if you're on YouTube, maybe you can help Reese and fill in the gaps in what I'm telling uh, Reese here. But um, you can't just plug your cameras into uh, the USB sockets if they're like, you know, like the cameras we have here. You can see one out of focus in the background there. That's like a, that's a DSLR camera. That's a, the kind of a, a handheld, it's not actually a DSLR, it's a mirrorless, but it's a, it's a, it's a, a normal camera. Um, you can't usually plug the USB from those cameras into your into your computer and just get it to work. You need a capture card, which will convert the HDMI output from that camera into USB, which we we use one from Elgato. It's called the StreamCam 4K. Um, that's one of the solutions. So you're going to have to get that. But if you've got like a Logitech webcam, you can just plug it in the USB on the back. So it depends on your cameras, really, Reese. Uh, all right, then. So uh, more questions from you guys and girls. Um, so uh, Stefan says, hey, Phil, I'd like to say a big thank you to create the review about Facebook copyrights. Uh, me and a lot of my friends in Quebec share this. Oh, you're very welcome uh, for that, uh, Stefan. Right. OK, so the next question or the next comment uh, is from Keaton, who says Keaton's on YouTube. If you're on YouTube as well and you've got ideas, go Give Keaton a hand in the comments, please. Has anyone got suggestions for record pools for original or extended edits of well-known dance music? Digital DJ Pool has got great remixes, but adds but lacks original stuff like Fisher, Oled, Oliver Heldens, etc. I find DJ City and BPM Supreme are pretty good for this stuff. Keaton, that'd be my two recommendations for you. DJ City and BPM Supreme. Uh, let us know uh, your thoughts on that, people. Uh, all right then, so the next one is from uh, Lauren, who says, Hi Phil, I want to help corporations spice up aw awful Zoom marathon meetings that always start late uh, by offering to DJ a bit. Uh, you've answered a ton about live, but not for Zoom. Any suggestions? I'll tell you what, I saw someone selling, uh, I think it was a goat. Uh, you could basically pay $100 online to have a goat turn up at your Zoom meeting. So one of the windows was just this goat in a field. I thought that was brilliant. I don't know. I mean, there's an idea there, I guess. 
uh, maybe you just need to get on LinkedIn and start to uh, make, make a little promo video of you DJing in a Zoom screen, do a little talk over, um, get it on YouTube, share it on all the platforms and see if it goes a little bit viral uh, and um, have a link to a page explaining it. Uh, it's quite a good idea, um, Lauren, but um, yeah, I think it's a good little business idea. Like I said, I've seen it done for goats. Why not do it for DJs? And let's face it, Zoom meetings are pretty boring. Um, the digital DJ tips ones accepted, of course. Our team meetings are wonderful, friendly, amazing things. Everyone else is boring. Uh, all right then. Um, so, uh, so more live questions. Just hello to everyone tuning in on Twitch. It's nice that we're slowly getting people on Twitch. Hi, Mike. Uh, good to have you there from our Twitch audience. Um, so lots of people asking about takedowns. Um, uh, M2 is alive, says, I'm really disappointed that you cannot record on, a hard, on the hard drive a live set when using Tidal. Right, so when you are using a streaming service on your, either on your laptop, so you're DJing directly from your, your laptop, or you're DJing from something like the, the controller that we're featuring here today, this one, the, uh, the Prime Go, which has got Tidal built into it. When you're DJing from any of those places, no, you can't have recording. You can't hit record either in your software or the hardware we just showed you records as well. And that's for a very good reason because the licensing from Tidal and all the other services does not allow you to stream their music and record it. Now, it doesn't mean you can't record it. Technically, it means that they can't make it easy for you in, the, easy for you in those systems. But it's not very hard to record your DJ sets if you're that way inclined. And there's lots of ways of doing it. Uh, one of the easiest ways is just to get a recorder, like I've got one here, you find my recorder. This is a little Tascam recorder. These are about $80. You can plug that in to here. It's got a little plug on it there. Get the right lead. Plug this thing in on your uh, spare output, so your booth output if you're using the master output for broadcasting, uh, and hit record on there, and it will record your whole set to SD card. And you can do that with any DJ setup. So if you really want to record it, it isn't hard. And if you're techie, there's ways of routing the audio inside the computer to do it as well and all that stuff. So it's not that it's impossible, it's just they're not going to make it easy for you. Uh, M2 is alive. And that's the truth. Um, uh, DJ Matt says, has anyone found a way to embed a Mixcloud Live or Twitch stream on Facebook? Uh, I don't think it's possible. Uh, I was talking to the Mixcloud people and they certainly don't think it's possible. So uh, so uh, such is life with these things at the moment. Uh, so Ray says, hey Phil, with Serato now offering Serato Play for free during May, what are the benefits to someone who has full Serato DJ already? I'm just wondering if it's worth downloading. Right, Serato Play is a piece of software which lets you turn your, basically turn your DJ um, software, your, your, your Serato DJ Pro, or indeed your Serato DJ Lite into a uh, into a laptop controlled DJ uh, system. So in other words, you don't need a controller plugged in. Now, you might be saying, hang on a second, can't you do that anyway with like virtual DJ and stuff like that? And the answer to that is you can, but guess what? You can't do it on Serato without this Serato Play add-on. So what I'm showing you here is uh, what it looks like. So this is Serato running on a laptop and it's all plugged in uh, to DJ. Uh, and what you're actually looking at here is a tutorial that we just published on how to do all of this stuff. So the question was, why do it? Well, on the screen, I'm telling you why, uh, and I'll tell you exactly what I said here. Mixing with your laptop is great because you can do it pretty much anywhere. You can open a laptop and plug your headphones in. You don't need to take DJ gear. So you can do it on your lap, on the sofa at night. You can do it uh, you can do it on a plane, you can do it anywhere you can, you know, practice your, you want to practice your mixes with your laptop, you can do it. It's really simple to do, you just have to get Serato or, or Serato DJ Lite, uh, both of them are free to use on just your laptop for everyone, and then get Serato Play, and Serato Play is also free at the moment, and this video here that I'm showing you in the middle of the screen, you can see it on digitaldjtips.com, just find this article, it's called uh, Tutorial, How to DJ with Just Your Laptop for Free with Serato. Does what it says on the tin. Uh, so go watch it. Go watch this video here, which will show you how to get all the software you need for free. Then watch this video here, which explains exactly how it all works. And then watch this. There's all the keys that you can use. And then watch this video here, 
which is me showing you uh, what you can do with it. I did a whole set on just the laptop keyboard, so you can see what's possible. Uh, one song got chopped out of that by the uh, YouTube police, so there's a big jump in the middle, but apart from that, it all uh, it's all there. And that'll show you the possibilities here. So I would say definitely download it, and everyone watching this, it's free. Serato's giving you Serato DJ Pro, as long as you only use it for um, laptop only DJ, it won't work with any hardware in the free version. And they're giving you Serato Play, the add-on that gives you cross faders and shortcuts and all that stuff without using a controller. And also the audio then comes through your computer as well. And you can plug a speaker directly into your computer if you want, or just plug headphones in, which is how I use it. I also show you how to set up separate headphones and speaker with that setup as well. It's all in those videos. So go find those people. Uh, all right then. Um, so thank you for that question, Ray. Uh, what would be the best ma best way to beat match two different tracks with different BPMs, like one at 120 and one at 90? What would be the best way? Don't try and beat match them normally, Abby. In our Mixing Power Skills course, we show you lots and lots of ways of doing this, you know, really clever ways, but don't. the, bo the bottom line is, unless you, you're using one of our clever ways, don't try and beat match them, they're too far apart. Just stop one clearly and start the other one. Maybe stop the first track when the beat is still going, and start the second track at the beginning of a breakdown where there is no beat. Because then by the time the beat comes back in, yes, it's at a different BPM, but the energy has been built up by the build and then the drop comes and who cares if it's at a different tempo. So there's just one way. Uh, but really don't try and beat match tracks that are that far apart as a rule. There are loads of brilliant ways of doing it. As I say, our mixing power skills course shows you all of that. But it's not something that, uh, unless you've got a plan, you know what you, you know, you know, you, you think, yeah, I'm going to use this particular mix that I've learned. Uh, and you know, normally you will have practiced it as well. Uh, it's not the kind of thing you would just do. You know, you don't see DJs manually beat mixing um, uh, tracks that are that far apart because it's not, it's not going to sound good unless, like I say, unless you're pretty sure you, uh, you've got a plan for how to do it. Uh, this is Mixing Power Skills, by the way. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a course that goes through all this kind of stuff, BPM changes, um, uh, genre changes, how to mix all kind, all different, you know, music from different ages and different eras uh, and, and all that stuff, acapellas and uh, all that stuff. So it's, uh, it's, it's a good little course. It's one of our most popular. So if you're interested in it, just head over to di digitaldjtips.com slash courses uh, to find out more about that. All right, thank you for that. Uh, next question is, um, Eve, is this is a big misunderstanding about Mixcloud? No, Eve, everyone can see your Mixcloud live streams. Everyone, Mixcloud will give you a little URL. In our instance, it's mixcloud.com slash live slash digital DJ tips. They'll give you one of those. Everyone can tune in and see it. You don't need to be a registered user. You do to comment, but not just to watch. Uh, all right then, and no, you don't need a certain amount of people to activate Mixcloud Live. It's for everyone, Shamel. So no reason not to go and have a go at that. Um, I'm watching you DJing with your keyboard using Serato Play right now, says Charles. Uh, great pointers and tips. Yeah, that video isn't just me doing a routine. I show you everything. We sat there and we put, we put annotations on every button I pressed. So you can see when I'm looping and filtering and cutting the crossfader and slowly moving the crossfader and changing the volumes and nudging. You can even nudge on the keys on there. Uh, you can see all that stuff. Um, Opinions on the Rain 12s for brand new DJs, says uh, Jay. Uh, Rain 12s are awesome if you want that vinyl feel. They're absolutely brilliant, but uh, most DJs don't. Most DJs don't really care about that, in which case you're probably better off with a, a, con a controller with fixed jog wheels. But uh, yeah, they're awesome. Steve, next week, not this Sunday, but next Sunday, my colleague Steve is going to be doing our Sunday live stream, and he's going to be using the Rain 12s for that. So if you're interested in those, tune in and have a look. Uh, all right, so uh, Jonathan says, as always, excellent videos with good content. I'd like to see a video going deeper into EQ theory. Uh, that is a great suggestion, Jonathan. We will certainly look at doing that for you. Uh, or, and I can see what you're talking about there, Jonathan. I'll make a note of your comments um, uh, and we will try and do that for you. Um, and you're in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, you wanted us to say that, Jonathan. So I have said that for you. Uh, all right, then. Um, more of your live comments. If you have just joined us, it's Phil at Digital DJ Tips. We're just answering all your questions today. Uh, our controller of the day is, uh, is this one, the Prime 2 from the Prime series from uh, Den and DJ. So if you've got any questions about the Prime controllers, uh, then uh, we are happy to answer those for you. I don't know why the audio is not on on that. It should be really, but uh, hey, such is life. Um, oh, you could hear that. I just couldn't. Uh, so yeah, we've got, uh, we've got the Prime controllers here to talk about. Uh, so what the Prime system, I keep calling them controllers because controllers imply you need a laptop, but with those you don't. Um, so uh, so yeah, I, it's, it's me just answering your questions. It's kicking back. It's Friday in the pub after work. 
Um, so yeah, if you've got any questions, just ask away. Uh, so DJ B have 88 over on Twitch says, hi, quick question. Is there a way to live stream from Serato DJ or from a Pioneer SX3? I watched your video with regard to the iRig stream, but none is currently available. Thank you. Uh, so the iRig, let me just show you what um, DJ B have is talking about. Uh, it's this here that I'm going to pull up, hopefully without taking our stream off the air, because I'm using it at the moment to stream. In the bottom corner of your stream, of your screen, I don't dare pull it anymore. You can see this little device I'm holding here, literally in the bottom right-hand corner. This is an iRig stream. And what I've got is the DJ controller, or the DJ system, plugged in here, uh, and I've got a monitor with a speaker so I can hear what I'm doing. And this is heading off to our computer uh, that, that um, is broadcasting what you're hearing now live to the internet. So the iRig stream is basically an audio interface. That's basically what it is. It's there to take the audio from whatever you're doing, microphones, systems, whatever, and put it into your computer to broadcast. Uh, and what DJB have 88 is saying, I can't find an iRig uh, stream online. They're all sold out. And there's other things you could find. Evermix, you could look for an Evermix. These do the same job. Uh, so you could try one of those. Although these only plug into um, Android and Apple. They don't plug directly into your computer. I think there probably is a way, but I don't think they give you the lead. So, um, but that's another option. Also, Roland's one. Uh, let me just grab my bag from over here uh, and I will show you the, the Roland one. It's down here, my bag. Here we go. And the reason I've got this here is that I am about to go live with it on Sunday. So this is the Roland unit. It's a Roland Go Mix Pro. They also have one called the uh, the Go Mixer Normal, uh, which is a slightly smaller than this. In fact, let's go back to the main camera and I'll show you the, the common camera and I'll show you this a little bit more closely. So this little box has got adjusters for four inputs, including a stereo input. So you'd have your controller there. You can plug microphones in here. You can plug a drum machine, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and the output here again, plugs directly into your computer or your iOS device. Uh, and this has got a master volume as well there in the middle. Uh, so there's loads of things like this. So you don't have to buy the iRig stream, but there is another little hack. Let me put that back in my bag now because I'll go home without it and then I won't have it for the live stream on Sunday. Uh, the, the way around it is, is like this. When you plug your controller, and this works for Serato, Virtual DJ, Tractor, all of them. When you plug your controller into your computer, what's happening is you're connecting it with a USB cable, which is a computer cable. It's the same kind of cable that connects all the parts inside your computer. So your computer basically thinks that the audio interface in your gear, the audio interface inside this, whoops, that, <laughs> and this has got an audio interface in it. Not with the, this system, actually. It's slightly different with the Denon systems, but the, this all... DJ controllers have got a audio interface in. That's how it can give you a headphones output and a speaker's output. There is audio circuitry in here. And that circuitry, the computer, once you plug that cable in, the computer thinks that's part of it. It's just another part of the, of the computer. And that means that you can actually tap into that audio without using an external interface, without taking the feed out of that, digitizing it again and plugging it back in. So if you're gonna live stream from the same computer that you're DJing from, and that's the crucial bit, you can actually hijack the audio from inside the computer, shove it into your live stream. What you need to do is get a little app that will do that for you. Now there is uh, an app called um, Loopback, Loopback on uh, iOS, sorry, on uh, Mac OS, so for Macs. There, there are other apps that do this as well for Windows. And what I recommend you do is head over to Digital DJ Tips and look for an article we published recently called Four Ways to Go Live, Four Ways to Live Stream. Just go to Digital DJ Tips, click all articles at the top and look down until you find four ways to live stream. And in there, I detail all the apps that you can use to do this, to actually get that audio into your broadcast computer without having to use an audio interface. I, I've been doing that myself um, and it works absolutely fine. It's always worked fine. It's a little known trick, that one. So yeah, that's the way you can do it, DJB have 88. Uh, all right then, we are live on Digital DJ Tips, about another 15 minutes. I mean, we've been here for a long time, but there's so many of your questions. I want to answer as many as I can. Uh, and this is Friday Q&A Live with me, Phil. Uh, it's, uh, it's your chance to ask anything. End of, end of Friday, you know, chilling out, kicking back, uh, and I'm here for you to answer. Uh, answer your questions. DJ Mark One, it's always a pleasure to have you here, sir. Uh, with the inclusion of day mode in DJ software, should manufacturers include this in standalone gear for those outside DJ gigs? We actually spoke directly to 
Den and DJ, I had them on the Tuesday Tips live show the other week, uh, and they told us it's coming. So there is going to be the ability to push your screen here into uh, black on white instead of white on black. So yes is the answer to that, certainly from Den and DJ. Um, so that'd be cool. Uh, all right then, so more questions. Um, uh, what do you suggest a DJ society focuses on with their good DJs during practice sessions? We're struggling to give them stuff to do, says Buried Deep. Uh, well, why don't you grab a copy of this to get some ideas? Um, seriously, you can get this book for free. Maybe some of you don't know that. If you want a free copy of my book, the Amazon bestseller on how to DJ, it's packed with, you know, stuff that you could be doing in lockdown. Uh, it's very, very simple. Go to djtips.co slash join. djtips.co slash join. That's it. Join Digital DJ Tips. I'll send you a PDF download for this book. Uh, and there's lots of ideas in there for your DJ on lockdown. Uh, great time to be, to be doing it, right? Uh, by the way, we've got an awesome production course that we've launched this week publicly that I, I will tell you about at the end. I've got, got you a 45% discount on it, which is pretty uh, pretty good. Not to be sniffed at. I'll tell you how to do that. Oh, all right then. I'll tell you how to do it now. Um, it's really simple. If you want to get that, uh, you just head over to our um, to our website. Uh, go to djtips.co slash produce. djtips.co slash produce. Uh, and once you're over there, you will be able to uh, you'll be able to uh, find that discount. So I was going to show you a, a cool little link there with djtips.co slash produce written on it. But uh, as usual in these things when you're live. Uh, I can't find it now, but hey, I told you. It's not hard to remember, is it? djtips.co, not com, co, slash produce. Uh, all right then, cool. So more of your questions. Uh, so Pre says, yeah, good to have you here, Pre, one of our awesome content creators here at Digital DJ Tips. Uh, YouTube does copyright claims, which also help to keep content up. I think it's the most, it's more forgiving for qualifying channels over a thousand subs, says Pre. One of the uh, tips that I, I can give you, unofficially of course, is if you set up a YouTube channel that's not important to you, uh, like a second YouTube channel, and you're gonna do a mix, upload the whole mix to YouTube, you know, with any old video, and, it, and, then, and then it will say, you know, copyright claim. Instantly it will say copyright claim on this video. Go to the video in YouTube Studio, click on the copyright claim little triangle, and it will show you all the tracks that it's noted, and whether they're amber or red. Amber means that they've monetized it, they put adverts on your video and stuff. Uh, red means your video is blocked. So don't use those red tracks. Now that's no guarantee that by the time you go to come to go live, it's not gonna happen. And it's no guarantee that it's not gonna happen at some time in the future. It's also no guarantee that you're not gonna get strikes and your channel is not gonna get taken off you. But it's certainly a thing you can do to minimize all those things. So a little tip for you there. And thank you, uh, Pri, for that uh, comment. Uh, all right then, so more, uh, uh, more uh, of your uh, feedback here. This is a lovely comment from David. I'll have to go up like this so you can still see me. Aside from live streaming and tech, I've noticed a lot of support between DJs mentally. Some of us are losing out financially, but also missing the feel of playing to a crowd and making people dance. I've seen a lot of positivity with DJs encouraging each other to make edits and remixes. We're all in this together. People like me uh, could afford new tech, but we've had to hold off due to lack of income. I wasn't very into the idea of live streaming as social media is saturated with that. I'm excited about how Mixcloud are going with that. I loved their platform for years as a legit podcast site. It's true, isn't it? There's lots of great competitions out there at the moment. Beatport is doing stuff. Serato has just, just launched one, I noticed in my inbox just before we went live. Um, you know, lean into these things, support them. And I have to say, especially in our community, you guys and girls are the best of the best. You have been really vocal, really helping each other. I just love seeing the comments coming in on these broadcasts and everyone's talking to everyone else. Over in Global DJ Network, it's particularly obvious that this is going on. So if you don't know about Global DJ Network, it's our Facebook group. It's our free Facebook group for all DJs. It's for DJs by DJs. Uh, and if you just go into Facebook and type Global DJ Network, enter into that search bar, it'll come up. Go in there, click join group. We admit everyone manually. It's a manual, you know, it's, it's free to join, but we do check everyone out and get you in one by one. It's about 9,000, 10,000 DJs in there. Great place to go and hang out. So if you're not in Global DJ Network, uh, get there. And if you're watching this on Global DJ Network right now, you're our VIPs. It's great to have you there on that platform. Uh, so yeah, I, I agree with you totally, David. People are being really, 
people have been really uh, supportive and it's lovely to see that. Um, Timothy, can you use an iPhone or iPad as a camera with OBS on Mixcloud? Yes, you can. Uh, it doesn't matter where you broadcast to. Mixcloud, YouTube, whatever, um, OBS will work. You get a little app for your phone that means you can use it wirelessly. Uh, so yes, you can do that, Timothy. Uh, all right then. Um, I tried out Mixcloud Live. It went really well. It only stopped when my phone died. Yes, I think... Uh, you're never going to get around your phone dying, unfortunately, Michael. Uh, but um, it will be good when you can live uh, stream your, uh, save your streams. So that is coming, saving your stream. It will only be audio, though. Uh, so there won't be any saving of video on that platform. Uh, so is there a way to mimic an isolator in DJ software? Says Mike. Uh, I can never find a way to do this. You can turn your individual uh, controls to isolators. So let's talk about isolators for a second. So on a DJ system like this, you have your low, mid and highs, right? Actually they're low, mid and high, these three here, right? So this is for controlling your EQs. Now normally, let's just get a track playing there. Hopefully you can hear me over that track. So normally, they're gonna do one of two things. What has happened there is isolation. You can't hear a thing, right? And now it comes back. That is, Infinity is cut the track to nothing. They're basically a three-way volume control when they're set in isolator mode. Now, you can actually change it on most DJ systems. On this system here, uh, there is a, it's either, in, it's either in utility or preferences, I never remember which, I think it's probably in preferences. Uh, you can head into here and you can change it so that the EQs, instead of doing that, they do the other EQ method. And the other EQ method is a little bit more subtle. Uh, and that will cut your music, but it won't cut it off uh, in the way that that just did. Uh, and of course, when you're live, you can never find these things quick enough. There we go. You probably can't see this, but it says EQ type, isolator or normal, right? So that's now set to normal. So now, you can still hear that. If you're on a phone, you probably can't, but that's still going. So it's more subtle. And normally, normally DJs will use that kind of more subtle approach uh, to doing this when they are, you know, DJing with pop music and music where there's a, there's a lot of frequencies going on, a lot of sound, a lot of guitars, lots of, yeah. So if you cut the bass, it's like you're cutting half the track out. Uh, and if you're DJing with underground techno, the bass is only the bass, right? You cut the bass, everything else is still cutting through and sounding good. So normally, Dance DJs are using it in isolator mode and, and pop DJs are using it in the kind of normal mode. But the question, so you can mimic it by turning it on, but the question that Mike is asking is, you know, a lot of DJ gear has, uh, or some DJ gear, in fact, maybe, no, it's not down there and I'm not getting it from up there. Uh, the, uh, some of, the, some of the, the newer Pioneer stuff has this. Uh, and, and actually, so does the, um, the Prime, not this one, but the Prime 4, I think. Uh, it has an EQ on the whole output. So in other words, you can do everything on your mixer and then just before it goes out to the speakers, there's another bass mid and treble. Um, and this can be really good for, you know, getting loops going and getting lots of tracks going together and, and manipulating the whole sound of everything you're doing and then whacking it back in again. Um, is there any way of kind of doing that if you haven't got it? The best way of doing it is to get a mixer like this. So this is called a live mixer. And the reason they're called live mixers is they're normally a lot wider. They've got like loads of channels. And these are the ones, the mixers you see, you know, if you go to a concert and halfway back from the stage, there's a, a fenced off bit and uh, there's people sat there with big desks. They're called live mixers. They're, they're listening to what's going on and they're tweaking it to make it sound better. Now, from a DJ's point of view, what you do with a mixer like this is you'd plug it in between your DJ controller and the speakers. And then you've got other controls. So you could use it to mix in other DJs. You could use it to have extra microphones and drum machines, but you could also use it to have an EQ. And the EQ is gonna be over your whole output. So mobile DJs and event DJs often have a little live mixer like this precisely for that reason, because it means that if the room they're DJing in isn't bassy enough or the mids are a bit, a bit, you know, cutting through a bit too much or the hi-hats are a bit shrill, they can roll them off a bit and tweak the room sound, EQ the whole room here. Uh, so, you can use that creatively as well. You know, you don't have to use that just to get the room sounding great. You could use it creatively. Uh, so one way around it, now this is quite a big live mixer. Uh, you can get um, little ones of these. Yamaha do a good one. I'm sure Behringer have them for like $60 or something. It's a little mixer with a stereo input. Look for one with three band EQ 
uh, and then from there you go off to your speakers. So that's another way of doing it. I'll put that down there for the moment. So I hope that's helpful, Mike. If you've just joined us, it's me, Phil, at Digital DJ Tips with Friday Q and A. We're going to go for another five or ten minutes because we've been here for an hour already. So wherever you've been, you can watch the whole replay. Uh, but the point of this is just to give a dose of normality. It's weird out there at the moment, isn't it, people? Let's be honest. Uh, to give you a dose of normality and just talk DJ. And we're kicking back. It's the end of the week, uh, so we're kicking back. We're having a drink, albeit water, and. Uh, we're chatting DJing for uh, an hour or so. All right then, more of your questions live. Uh, Nikki says, I've learned a lot from Phil's book, Rock the Dance Floor. A great read, read for the whole spectrum of DJs. And as I say, you can get it free. Get it out of the way of my microphone. Uh, get it free when you join Digital DJ Tips for free. So uh, thank you very much for that, Nikki. Very uh, nice to hear that you've got value from the book. Um, all right then. Um, Tim says, I posted my music on Mixcloud YouTube, on my YouTube page, so it won't be taken down. I had to put it under a different category, not music, but it's hard to get views on my mixes. Um, I'm not sure that really makes a difference, Tim. If anyone's got any thoughts about that, share, but you know, they're, they're, they're kind of wise for that one, I'm pretty sure. Um, so, all right then. Um, uh, Tog USA 10 says, hi, Phil. I got my Prime 2 yesterday, but the Master V U meters don't work. Have you double checked that everything's kind of correct and you've got the master level up and stuff? I'm sure you have, but I've got a feeling it's going to be something small. Tog USA, have another look. I hope it is. I hope you just spot it and go, oh, silly me, and you can get on with it. I really do. Um, all right, then. So, uh, more of your uh, live questions just for the last five minutes here. Oh, Nikki's asked me a question What was your favorite club to play, Phil, and why? I've got two answers to this. You know, the most prestigious club I ever played was Privilege in Ibiza, the main room of the biggest club in the world. You'd think that that would be my highlight of my DJing career. And of course, when people ask me, you know, well, tell me about your DJing, of course I'm going to mention that, who wouldn't? But actually, the club that is closest to my heart is a club called Tangled in Manchester, which I co-founded with my friend Terry. Uh, and we ran it for many, many, many years, well over a decade together, um, every week. And we had the best crowd in the world uh, coming to that week in, week out. We were, you know, we had forums and stuff, a community long, when web communities were just starting, we had one for that club. It was very, very, very special. I still have dreams that I'm playing to that dance floor in that club today. And I lasted that 15 years ago. That place is going to it's going to be in my thoughts on my deathbed, I promise you it is. Uh, so Tangled in Manchester, for sure, uh, in England, is the club that I was most in love with. You know, I used to play the warm-up sets. I used to play from 10 to all about 1 in the morning. Then the guests would come on and then Terry, my DJ partner, would end the night. Um, if it was just Terry and me, we'd cut it up a bit and we'd both play different, different parts. And quite often, one of us was having a week off and the other one would do the whole night. Uh, so I quite often played 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. And once or twice I played an all-nighter, 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Uh, just wonderful, wonderful times. That was in the kind of 90s and 2000s. Uh, so yeah, it's my favourite clubs to play. I absolutely loved it. Um, all right then, we were talking earlier about how to stay motivated. David says, recording sets is the best tip I learned. Um, Self-taught, recording onto cassette, you learn a lot from criticizing your own mistakes. You have to be recording your sets, people. You just have to. Um, all right then, um, uh, I'm just gonna read two or three more questions out. Good to see so many of you helping each other out in the comments. You don't really need me a lot of the time, which is uh, awesome. It's so good to see you, uh, so good to see you just helping each other with this stuff uh, and no need for me to jump in at all. Uh, lots of you giving love for Mixcloud, which is awesome. Um, uh, you know, people are saying I'm having troubles using uh, live streaming software. The thing is, your computer is going to struggle because you're feeding a lot of video into it and stuff. So start off by making everything the lowest quality. So let the, so let the lowest bandwidth, lowest quality, smallest size of um, video, and, you know, do all that stuff so that you don't, Overload the computer and then when it works first time, make one setting a bit better. Put one of your cameras to slightly higher quality and then try again. And as soon as your computer starts whirring away or you start getting glitches, roll back again. It's a bit like using DJ software with the latency slider. Um, you need a powerful computer to do this stuff. You really do. I mean, the one I'm talking to you on now, we've got four cameras. We've got, uh, got this camera I'm talking to you on now. We've got the overhead camera there. We've got the one that you always see on Digital DJ Tips with me here. Uh, and we've got the one here. 
Uh, then we've got two types of sound feeding into it and all the overlays and stuff. You know, you need a very powerful computer to do that. You can't just use your laptop to do that stuff and expect it to be all right. And even in this setup, we've got the cameras reined in, we've got them reined back. We're not using them so anywhere near their full capability. This could all be in 4K if we wanted, but I tell you, the computer couldn't do it, the upload couldn't do it, and probably most of the platforms couldn't do it. So why bother? So that one tip is just to rein everything back. Um, you know, people will forgive that stuff. It's better to have a smooth stream than a broadcast quality stream. Uh, all right then, um, so things to do under lockdown. Michael, hello Michael. I've been doing some DJing and karaoke, unfortunately, in my Skype for business at work. Skype can take your OBS feed as its camera and then feed your audio signal as a microphone. So there you go then. Hijack Skype and use it for DJing, I love that. Um, uh, so any advice on going to a new song with a different pitch? Not pitch matching, but going back to the original pitch on the new song. Right, yeah, so a bit of advice here. If you want to mix between two tracks and they're not too far apart, like 5, 10 BPMs, slowly make one song 5 BPMs faster and the other one 5 BPMs slower. So in other words, if you've got a 130 and a 120, meet in the middle at 125 and then just slowly over like the first minute, nudge the, the, the tempo of the, the new song once you've mixed into it up. People won't notice if you do it a bit at a time, bit at a time, really slowly over a minute or two minutes uh, to get back to the original tempo. That's certainly how I do it. Um, uh, all right, what's the best way to time code acapellas for your live mixes? This is a great one. So the trouble with acapellas is they haven't got a drum beat, right? So they're quite hard to, to grid up. The easiest way to do it is to get the original song that the acapella came from on one deck, lay the acapella over the top on the other deck, copy the BPM across so you know you got that right, line the vocal up so that the vocal's in time with the original song, and then when you've done that, hit the beat grid and copy the beat grid across. And now you've got a perfectly beat gridded acapella uh, and the beat grid will, will, you know, will act as if it has got a beat underneath it. So that's the easiest way of doing that. Seize the day. I'm 50 and I'm thinking of getting into the DJ arena. Mistake, read your own name, seize the day. Of course it ain't a mistake. I'm 50. Um, nothing wrong with it. DJing is for everyone, not just the young. Uh, and there are more and more opportunities now to DJ than ever before. You could be live streaming uh, and you could play every week from now until you can't be bothered anymore. That could be 30 years from now. Don't let age stop you doing anything. Uh, all right then. Um, so uh, I'm just going to read out one or two more because uh, believe it or not, my family are at home. It's a, it's, a, it's a bank holiday here in Gibraltar. It's May Day early because it actually is May the 1st, right? We have it on May Day. And my family are at home and I want to go home and see them. So I'm just going to do a, a few more minutes here and then we're going to go. We've had a whole hour. Can you believe that? A whole hour of, uh, of questions. Um, which is just awesome. Um, maybe we'll put two hours aside next week to do this. Uh, lots of people giving C's the day. A thumbs up. We've got uh, Mike, who's 64 and still DJing. Uh, David Morales is in his 50s. Carl Cox is in his 50s. Paul Pete Tong's in his 50s. Don't you let it stop you. And I mean that most sincerely. Uh, all right then. What's the best software for library management? I've been a Traxxer user for years, but I'm finding it more of a wrangle to keep my growing library in order. Recordbox is very, very good. Um, I'd say Recordbox is the best. So there you go, simple answer, Recordbox. Tractor's got a particularly bad library system. Uh, so, so there we are. Um, so uh, just one or two more questions, people. I'm just looking for something that's a bit different from what we have asked, what we've answered so far today. Um, and uh, so many people saying, it's, you're never too old to learn, I love that. Um, would you su uh, suggest Streamlab for DJs? Yes, it's great. It's uh, free. It's a different version of OBS for streaming streaming software. It's great. Uh, so um, uh, I'm going to do one more question, I think. So I'm going to find a really good one. Lots of you asking your questions more than once, which I can understand. You know, there are people I won't be able to get to here, but we will try and get to you in the comments afterwards. So if you're watching the replay, ask your questions anyway. We'll try our hardest to answer them in the comments. Um, so uh, the final question today is going to be, I want to get one that isn't streaming. I know that everyone's really into streaming at the moment, but I want to get one that isn't streaming. Um, um, lots of people talking about my book, which is nice. Thanks, people. Um, uh, my wife, I met Phil Entangled. Uh, so see, the family are watching. They're waiting for me to go home. It's nice. Uh, so hello, Faye. Yep, she met me. She came into the DJ booth. Uh, and I thought, what, there's another girl in the DJ booth, this is great. Uh, but she said, I prefer the DJ upstairs uh, and your website's not all that much. You need to do some work on it. I can help you with that website if you like. And I thought, hang on a second. She prefers the guy upstairs and she wants to help me with my website. 
it's not a 10 out of 10 so far, but I'm going to I'm, I'm going to lean in here. Uh, and we are now happily married for many, many years with two lovely kids. So uh, it worked. So if you are stuck for a partner, become a DJ, found a nightclub, uh, run it for 10 years and hope someone walks up to you in the DJ booth or just join match.com. Uh, anyway, thank you very much for that today. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, so my final question uh, is going to be from... Uh, uh, so many of you have been just nice. You've just been nice, saying nice things. Uh, but I want to find a final question. Look, good to have some youngsters on here as well. Hello to 16-year-old Taha. Good to have you here. Um, so, oh, here's a final question. This is a good one to end on, as you will see. Uh, so Alvin says, hey, Phil, is the new music production class the same as the old one, or is it new material? So I said I would tell you at the end about our new music production class. So here's the thing. Right now, on lockdown, there probably has never been a better time to learn to make music, right? You're on lockdown, what else are you gonna do? Um, but the problem is, uh, it's just twofold. One, people think that it's really hard to make music, and two, people think you need loads of gear to make music. So we've made a course called Dance Music Formula. I'm showing you the page for Dance Music Formula now. You can go to djtips.co slash produce. djtips.co slash produce to see this page. There's a little video there explaining about it. It's currently 45% off this course for just this week because it's the, uh, the launch week. So if you're interested in learning to make music now in lockdown, it's a good time to get it. Uh, and our students have got stuff on Spotify and Beatport and Soul Music and they've, you know, they've, they've, they've run with this. Uh, but here's the thing, uh, this course is brand new. This has been completely remade for 2020. Uh, it's for Ableton 10. So Ableton 10 wasn't in existence when we first made this course. It's for Ableton 10, and it's uh, it's been it literally is is it was just finished about a week ago by Joey. Uh, so this course is absolutely brand new, and it's currently 45% off. So uh, in answer to your question, it's brand new. But I just want to tell you something else about this course as well. Just generally, people, the good thing about this course is that it doesn't assume you've got musical knowledge. So it teaches production, not being a musician, they're different things. Uh, and you can produce music without being a musician. You'll find out how. But secondly, it doesn't assume you've got gear. You can just use your laptop. Uh, so those two things make it perfect if you're under lockdown. But the third thing is, and this is the cool thing, we didn't make this happen, it just was serendipitous. Uh, Ableton made their software, it uses Ableton, it made it, they made it completely free for three whole months. You could buy this course, get the software from Ableton for free and start making music and you've got three months to do it. Now, within three hours, you will have your first tune outline and ready. Within three days, you'll have your first tune finished if you know, you're sat there with nothing else to do. But certainly within three weeks, you'll have your first tune finished. By the end of three months, you'll have your first album done. Uh, and I reckon lockdown will be going on that long anyway. So look, it's a great time to do it. You can get the software for free. And while I'm just telling you the advantages of this, uh, we have got a deal with Ableton where you can, if you do want to buy the software, because most, e most DJ producers use Ableton, if you do want to buy it, we get you an instant 40% off. So look, if you are thinking about production, for goodness sake, go and have a look at that course. Uh, everything's free or discounted at the moment just for the next week. Uh, so it's djtips.co slash produce. Uh, if you're interested in producing. So Alvin, thank you for that. I'm going to hold it there, folks, uh, because we've been here for 70 minutes live. It's turning into one of Donald Trump's nightly addresses. And I, I don't want I don't want to be the Donald Trump of the DJ education world. I really don't, without getting political about this. Of course, uh, you know, other world leaders are available. Uh, so uh, I'm going to end it there. Thank you very, very much, everyone. It's been very busy again. Uh, and uh, lots of you just saying thanks over on Facebook, YouTube, Global DJ Network and uh, on Twitch. So awesome. Um, it's uh, it's just, I love it. It's just, it's, you know, times are hard. Work is hard at the moment, but to talk DJing with you guys and girls for an hour at the end uh, is just a great way of ending my week. So I'm going to skip home happy now, uh, but do come and join me on Sunday at this time, actually. So wherever you're watching now, I will have been live for 10 minutes on Sunday at this point. So 5 p.m. in London, midday in uh, Eastern time. Uh, come and join me uh, because I'll be doing a Balcony Beats set. Seriously laid back house music and a bit of disco, but it's going to be laid back folks. Sunshine music uh, for you uh, on Sunday. So come join me for that uh, and also join me next Tuesday at the normal time, 4pm London, 11am Eastern for Tuesday Tips Live. Got an, Hopefully got a, a, 
an international scoop for you next week. It could be New Gear Week, uh, and I could have it in the studio depending on how things go. So, uh, so tune in for that one. Uh, and if not, I'll see you here next time. Uh, I might even drag Steve in next week to help uh, or one of the other team members on this broadcast. Come here, same time, same place next week, and we'll chat DJing again. Uh, so for everyone who is, uh, everyone who's just saying thank you over on the, uh, the channels, uh, thank you um, uh, for being there. Uh, and, you know, get good, stay safe, make the moments, people, uh, and I will see you again very soon. Until next time, bye-bye. Let's have a bit of music to end with, eh, folks? Let's get that old one playing again there. There you go, some play out music from me. See you later folks, bye bye.